Good morning, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Good morning, Mary. Pray you all are having a blessed morning. Good morning, Annette. Pray your transition into your position is going well. Amen. Thankful, absolutely. Grateful, thankful this morning. I'll let a couple few more people come on in and we will get right into the word. <clears throat> Matthew 7 is where we are going to come from this morning. About verse um, 19. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you right now for your servant, Annette Johnson, Lord. We, we thank you, Father, that you chose her, you called her. Hallelujah. You positioned her, you placed her. And Father, we just ask for your peace. We ask for your continued grace, God, to walk out the, the assignment that you've given her. Hallelujah. As the Pike uh, trustee, Pike Township trustee, Lord, you are able, God, download strategy, God, put the right people around her, Lord. Give everyone a heart to work towards the goals and the strategies, the purposes and the plans that you've given her. God, we thank you for a spirit of unity. Hallelujah. We thank you for a spirit of harmony. We thank you that we do not walk by faith. We walk by sight. We thank you, God, for those who are a part of the fourth watch prayer. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for their commitment. We thank you for their diligence, God. I ask, Father, that you favor them today, God. You grant them, God, the answer to their prayers, Lord. Grant them, God. Meet their needs, God. Do the exceeding and the abundant above all they could ask, think, or imagine according to the power that works within them. God, we thank you. We thank you that your power is in us, God. We thank you that we rise in that power. We go to sleep in that power. We're kept while we sleep because of your power. Thank you for the Holy Spirit this morning. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for Crystal. We thank you for Yvette, God. We thank you, God, for Yawanda, God. In the name of Jesus, God, you are more than able, God. Hallelujah, God. Ayaraboshe, God. Yes, Lord, strike their enemy's jaw. I don't know why that came to me, but somebody is clearly facing an enemy, God, that you need. You Somebody's facing an enemy that you need, God, to stand up against, God. Hallelujah, God. You are the slayer of giants, Lord. So, Father, Father, we thank you for the sword, the knife that you put in our hands, hallelujah, which is the word of God, Lord, and we can pray it and we can take down giants, hallelujah, God, we ain't got to fight them, we ain't got to curse them, hallelujah, God, we ain't got to rage at them, good morning, brother triplet, hallelujah, God, we thank you. We thank you. We don't have to do none of that, God. But you are a giant slayer. So, Father, give us our rocks and our, sl our slingshot, God. God, give us what we need, God, to come against the enemies that have come against us, oh God. Good morning, Sister Lynette, God. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. You are more than able, God. Hallelujah. You are the fixer of all things. You are our hope of glory. Hallelujah, God. We thank you because Christ is in us, our hope of glory. God, we thank you. We thank you for the glory this morning. We thank you, God, for the glory that is yet to be revealed. And we thank you for the glory that has been revealed. Hallelujah. The glory that rests in us. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, God. We stand back and we watch and see the salvation of the Lord, the victory of the Lord, the promises of God, the glory of God. Hallelujah, God. In the name of Jesus, God. God, just as the, the Egyptians, God, came after the children of Israel, God, and you let the water drown them. Oh, God, they saw the miracle, but yet they thought they could walk into the miracle as an enemy of God. No, God, you keep our enemies back. You destroy. Hallelujah. You destroy our enemies by the miracles that you give us. Hallelujah, God. You destroy our enemies by the miracles that you give us, God. 
Hallelujah. That same power that gives us miracles is the same power that will come against our enemies. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. God, let someone know this morning. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God. An enemy is anyone who comes against the purpose and the plan that you have for your children. Oh, God, your enemy can be another Christian. Oh, Jesus, I just said something. Oh, God, help your people this morning. Help your people this morning. Help us to live, God. Hallelujah. Brotherly, showing brotherly kindness, God, one to another. Hallelujah, God, for there is one God. There is one Lord. There is one baptism. There is one Holy Spirit. God, and we thank you that we rest in that place, God. We thank you, God, that there is no weapon that can be formed against us. Hallelujah. There is no tongue that can rise us up against us. God, that you will not give us the power, us the power to condemn. Hallelujah, God. So I thank you, God, that you're teaching each of us, God, how to use your power in us, God, to come against the works of the enemy that have come into our lives, God, the enemy of debt, God, the enemy of loneliness, the enemy, God, of, yes, naysayers and gossipers and haters, but, God, the enemy that is within us, God, the enemy within me, hallelujah, God, sometimes we are our worst enemy, oh, God, help us, Lord, to walk by faith and not by sight, God, help us in the name of Jesus to see us, God, in the name of Jesus, to see ourselves victorious, God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, stand up in your people this morning. Oh, God, even as I posted the other day, God, you, oh, God, was the word, but you used the word. Hallelujah. To send the enemy on the run. Hallelujah. So, God, stand up in us, oh, God. The word, the word of Jesus, you, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, God. Stand up in us, oh, God, so we can stand, God, toe-to-toe, hallelujah, with the enemy and not be afraid and he will flee. We submit ourselves to you. Hallelujah. We humble ourselves under your mighty hand. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. We surrender to you, oh God, and the enemy must flee. God, we trust you this morning. We love you this morning. We thank you this morning. There is none like you, God. Hallelujah, God. Favor us this morning. Grant us your grace, your peace, your mercy. Hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. You are great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. There is none like you in all the earth, oh God. Hallelujah. We really did search, maybe not all over, but we searched and we found there is no one like you. There's no one like you. You're not in a bottle. Hallelujah, God. You're not in a man. You're not in a woman, God. Hallelujah, God, because they cannot be our God. They cannot be our Holy Spirit. Bless your name, oh Jesus. Hallelujah, God. God, I pray you strengthen your people this morning. You said where we are weak, hallelujah, because you are in us and you give us strength, we can be made strong, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Steady their minds, oh God. Somebody's plotting vengeance. I hear you. Somebody saying, if I get a chance, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. The devil is a liar this morning. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God. God can strike them. Hallelujah. God can cause the pit that they have tried to dig for you, for them to fall into that pit. Hallelujah. To never return, oh God. Hallelujah, God. He can cause them to be drowned. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the waters that they tried to push you in. Hallelujah. He could cause them to, to stumble over the rope that they've tried to cause you to trip over. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name, Pastor Spencer. Bless your name this morning, Brother Randall. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We are coming against the works of the enemy this morning. Those workers of iniquity. Hallelujah. Those workers of lawlessness. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah. Those workers who plot sin against you. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus, God. We come against the workers of iniquity this morning. Hallelujah. Those who just have a habit of doing wrong. Good morning. Hallelujah. Those who just have a habit of doing things the wrong way, who operate in trickery and deceit, God. Lying and stealing and cheating. Oh, God. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus, who operate in hatred and plotting and getting back and, and trying to be the avengers of God. 
Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God, you are, you are, oh God, our battle axe this morning. You defend us, oh God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, you are our great defender. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, our ministering angels go before us. Hallelujah. They fight our battles. Hallelujah. They stand on watch and they stand on guard. They will not allow the enemy to keep trampling over us. Oh, okay. Okay. Hallelujah. I hear you, Jesus. No weapon formed against us will prosper. Ah, ah. So if no weapon formed against us will prosper, then that means that we're giving the enemy the weapon that's being formed against us. Hallelujah. Because your word tells us in Colossians 3 that you took the weapons of the enemy and you destroyed them and you made a public spectacle of him and them by the cross. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Good morning, Sister Evelyn. Good morning, Sister Owens. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Good morning. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh God. Oh God. Oh God, oh God, oh God. So if you destroy the weapons, that means we somehow keep allowing them to be formed. Because we're giving them the ammunition. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. We're giving the enemy the ammunition to come against us. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. God, arise and show yourself strong over your people this morning. Arise and show yourself powerful. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. God, let somebody know you are not only with them, you are not only in them, you are for them. You fight their battles for them. Hallelujah, God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for being the Lord God of the breakthrough. We thank you for being Bel El Perizam, the Lord of the breakthrough. God, we thank you that you, God, are Jehovah Nisi. You are our banner of victory. Hallelujah. And you reign and, and you rule over us, oh God. You wave the banner of victory over us, oh God. Let someone see themselves victorious this morning. Hallelujah. Let someone see you fighting their battles this morning. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, God, that you rule and you reign. You sit high and you look low, oh God. Hallelujah, God. You see, God, the issues, God, in each of the lives of, of those under the sound of my voice, oh God. You know their hurts. You know their pains. You know their struggles. You know, God, where they are financially, where they are, God, in their jobs, what they need, God, long before they ask you, no. Hallelujah. You know those who plotted and schemed against them, oh God. You know. You know, God, you know, you know, you know. Hallelujah, God. Be their answer, God. God, oh God, oh God. Come into their dreams, oh God. Show them open visions, oh God. Hallelujah, God. You said we will not be ignorant of Satan's schemes and devices. So, Lord, we thank you this morning. We love you this morning. We trust you this morning. God, we thank you for the power of prayer. We thank you for the power of agreement. Where two or three are in agreement, touching and agreeing, oh God. On anything, God, you promised you would be the, in the midst of us. So God, I pray that you as our battle axe come and knock down everything that is conspiring. And that's, that has come against your people, that has come against us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, be our battle axe today. Hallelujah, God, knock it down. Hallelujah, God, knock down debt, God. In the name of Jesus, knock down depression. In the name of Jesus, knock down anger. In the name of Jesus, knock down disagreements, God, and, and issues where people cannot be reconciled. In the name of Jesus, God, knock down selfishness and knock down pride and knock down the lies, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah, God, be our battle axe today. We thank you for our ministry angels that have been gone before us, but there are some things on the rear, on our feet, oh God. Hallelujah, God. We need you to be our battle axe this morning, God, and knock it down, oh God. Knock down the strongholds, God. The strongholds of addiction, oh God. The strongholds, God, of iniquities, oh God. The strongholds of family and generational curses and iniquities and habits, oh God. Knock them down, oh God, with your word, oh God. 
By their faith, oh God, let it be knocked down, oh God. Let them see the wall crumbling, oh God. The walls of lies that told them what they won't be and what they can't accomplish. And you just like your daddy and you just like your mama and you ain't going to never be nothing. And ain't nobody in our family ever did that. And it don't take all that. And hallelujah, God, you sick and you will never recover, God. Knock it down in the name of Jesus, God. Be our battle axe this morning. Hallelujah, God. This is who you promised to be for us. Oh, God, we forget about the battle axe. Oh, God, let somebody understand the battle axe is like, hallelujah, a battling ram and an axe. So you can cut things down and you can knock things down. Good God Almighty. Every tree, every tree and every trouble that is standing in our way, oh, God, you have the power to knock it down or cut it down. Good God Almighty. Oh, God, we put the word on it this morning. We put our faith on it this morning. Hallelujah, God. We will not be, we will not stray. We will not stumble. We will not put our hand to the plow and look back. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God, like Lot's wife, because we want to look at the past. We want to look at who's on our, on our tail and on our trail. Oh, God, we look forward. We look to the hills from which cometh our help. And we know that our help comes from you, oh, God. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, God. We press towards the mark of the higher calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Oh, God, we don't want to find ourselves, oh, God. Guilty, God, of the same things our enemies have been guilty of. Hallelujah, God, in the name of Jesus. We don't want to be found guilty of doing and saying and the things that they say, oh, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We want to be set apart, oh, God. We want to be used for your glory. We want to be me for the master's use in your hands to mold and shape us, God, how you have for us to be. According to your original creation and design for us, oh God. Hallelujah, God, because you know the plans that you have for us. You know the plans that you have for us, oh God. And as sure as you know the plans that you have for us, you know, God, what's lurking around the corner. Hallelujah, you know what's up the road. Oh God, let us not be discouraged because that opportunity didn't open or that door was closed, oh God. Because you know what's up the road, oh God. We thank you in the name of Jesus. God, I ask for a swift a swift response to the prayers of your people, God. I ask for a swift change, go oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, just like those dragonflies I've been seeing. I saw one yesterday again, oh God. I thank you, God, for the reminder that it's going to be a quick transition in my life. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, it's going to be a quick transition, oh God. Oh God, holy, hallelujah, God. Self-discovery we come into, God, during for, uh, fourth watch prayer, oh God. We come into self-discovery, self-examination. It is me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It is me, oh Lord, standing needing cleansing of a clean heart and a pure, clean hands and a pure heart, oh God. It is me, oh God, this morning who needs to check my attitude and check my disposition and check my behavior, oh God. It it is me, O oh Lord, who needs more grace. It is me, O oh Lord, who needs your mercy this morning. Hallelujah, God. We thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you for the swift change. We thank you like that dragonfly. The name, the name. Don't get confused by the name of that bug. Hallelujah. He has a powerful meaning. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus, God. We thank you for the swift transition, O oh God. We thank you for the swift change in us, O oh God. We thank you for the swift change, God, that brings about change in our lives, oh God. Hallelujah, God, in the name of Jesus. It is me, oh Lord. Somebody needs to forgive themselves for a bad decision, for a bad choice. Hallelujah, that resulted in an outcome, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God, that was not favorable. The door was opened in favor. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. But a, a decision, a wrong decision, not so much, um, God said, not so much good morning sayings, Monica, not so much a bad decision, but you didn't think the decision through. And because you didn't think it through, uh, you had quick feet, maybe even trying to help someone. And that caused some negative responses and the negative outcome to be on you forgive yourself you were not foolish you were not stupid 
Hallelujah. You thought you were doing what was best. But God said, forgive yourself today. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for swift change. We thank you for a swift transition in our lives, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you are going to come and you are going to answer and you are going to do it swiftly, oh God. Hallelujah, God. And we will come out of this thing, God, with ease, God. Our work will not be laborsome in this thing, in this thing. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, God. Do it in me, oh God. Change me, oh God, completely, God. Not just quickly, but completely, God. Do the work, God. Do it quickly and completely, God. With those around us and those who are in our lives, oh God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you this morning. We love you this morning. We thank you, God. You are a swift mover. Hallelujah. You are a sudden God. Hallelujah. Sudden, suddenly. Hallelujah. A word of behold. Hallelujah. The curtains going to go up. Hallelujah. Behold. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, Sister Carolyn. Glory to God. Come quickly to answer God. Quickly to change us, our environment, our situation completely. Hallelujah. That person in your life that needs to change. They don't know how to treat you. They don't know how to talk to you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Come quickly to change them right now. In the name of Jesus. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. You've been patient. You've been patient with them. Your son, your son or your daughter has been patient with them. Hallelujah. God said you don't get to leave if they're your wife. You don't get to leave if they're your husband. Hallelujah. You don't get to leave. I'm looking. Jesus. Okay, Lord. I don't know where it's at. Amen. Hallelujah. God's going to do it. God's going to do it. Somebody say God's going to do it. Hallelujah. I'm favored by God. Somebody say, I'm his favorite. I'm his favorite. Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm his favorite. Good morning, Diane. I'm his favorite. What? What? Hallelujah. We know. We know there's no favorites in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But there is favor because the favor of God is on your life. You are a favorite of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He ain't got no, he, he's not a respecter of person. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But it it's all right to say I'm, I'm, I'm the favorite. I'm God's favorite. Hallelujah. I'm his favorite. We're going to look at the word this morning in Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 19. Um, I want you uh, to... Um, Y'all ain't... See, thank you, Yvette. I am his favorite. Yes, I am. Y'all, listen, you better know that. If you don't know you God's favorite, then you might have some issues. He loves all of you. Your name is written in the palm of his hand. Don't get off such a much now. Like, ooh, that is blasphemy to say that I'm God's favorite. I am his favorite. I am favored by God. Duh. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lynette. Thank you, Evelyn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. I am God. I am favored by God. I am his favorite. I am. I am favored. Therefore, I'm his favorite. Okay. He's a big God. He's a big God. Hallelujah. He got a whole bunch of kids and he know all the all names. He know every last one of our names. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. So he is not tripping. Y'all, all y'all who come from big families, y'all know how y'all call everybody's name trying to get to the right. Um... Janet Kelly, uh, shoot you. Hallelujah. See, God don't do that. He gonna call you. Absolutely. He gonna say, Lynette, Mary, hallelujah, Evelyn, hallelujah, Renardo, hallelujah, Kendra, hallelujah, Crystal, he know your name, Monica, he ain't tripping, hallelujah, my daddy loves me and I am favored by God. What? And because of that, he going to call. He going to hear me. He going to answer. When, when I call, he answers me. Isn't that right, Kendra? When I call, Renardo, when I call, God answers. Hallelujah. He might just say, like your mama used to say, just a minute. <laughs> Hold your britches. Just a minute. But he coming. Hallelujah. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Glory to God. 
body's coming. I feel that in my bones this morning, Tyler Hill. That's that he's coming. Glory to God, it's in my bones. Shut up like fire. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody, I hope you feel that. I hope you feel it. He's coming. 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 He's going to come swiftly with your answer. Good God Almighty is going to come swiftly with your reward because you've been patient. Hallelujah, God. He's going to come. He's going to come with what you need. Don't grow weary in your well-doing. Your due season is, is upon you. For some of you, it's right now. But I declare for everyone under the sound of my voice, it is up on you. Your due season is up on you. Hallelujah. You are going to see the people who came against you. You are the people who came against you in word, deed, action. You are going to see them fall. You ain't got to pray for them to fall. Listen, you ain't got to pray for them to fall. You're going to start seeing the things in their life. Start to not work for their good because they've been sliding on easy street thinking they was okay, patting themselves on the back. Yeah, I did that. Yup, yeah, mm hmm. But God's gonna bring that pride down. Y'all better hear me. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes, it is due season for your reward. He said, Vengeance is his. You ain't got to plot against nobody. I'm telling you now, you ain't got to plot against nobody. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Sharon. Good morning, Sister uh, Horton. Hallelujah. You ain't got to plot. Don't plot. Mm -mm. You ain't got to sit up on your bed. That's what we're going to talk about. Iniquity. The workers of iniquity. I'm going to hit this and we're going to get on up out of here in 30 minutes. The workers of iniquity. First of all, I think it's important. Matthew 20, Matthew 7, uh, starting about in verse 19. It's important that you know what iniquity means. Now, I bless God for all of those who were here during uh, the power of prayer. Uh, now when it's time to teach, I hope you're still listening, okay, even while you're getting dressed. Because we need prayer and the word, amen, so we can go about our day and understand what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us. Because all of us, whether we know it or not, we either <clears throat> have struggled with iniquity in our own lives in one, one aspect or one form, or you have encountered those who are workers of iniquity. That's just the truth. Okay, so let me let's just define what iniquity is. Iniqu iniquity. So the Bible. I'm gonna next week. I'm gonna talk about uh, more about sin versus transgression versus iniquity. So next week we're gonna look at all three. But today, as we look at chapter seven of Matthew, it says, "Every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire." Therefore, by their fruit, by all of us who say we are believers, you will recognize them as true or false. Okay? That's a part of it, Yvette. Hidden sins. Uh, hidden sins a part of it. it it's, uh, um, well, they're not hidden from us because when I really, we talk about the definition, you'll understand the, the hidden sin is often the sin that you try to hide from other people. <laughs> so, he says, all who you will know them by their fruit, if they are a true prophet, if they are a true believer, or if they are a false prophet or not a believer. He said, you'll know them by their fruit. He said, and now we know what we're not when he's not even talking necessarily just about the fruit of the spirit, love, gentleness, kindness, faithfulness, uh, self-control, not not just that, but the fruit of their character, the fruit of how they live, the fruit of how they treat other people. He said, you're going to know how they fruit. Do we do, does the, the person of high character and 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 integrity, do they miss it and, and maybe not treat someone the way that they should or say something that's sharp or quick? Sure, because we all are going to miss it. This is not what this is about. This is a lifestyle of mistreating people. This is a lifestyle of iniquity. And so he goes on to say, not everyone, hear, hear me, beloved. Not everyone who says to me, this is Jesus talking, Lord, 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 Lord. He said, everybody who's saying ain't going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Now you might be here on the earth, but you ain't going to enter the kingdom of heaven just because you say, Lord, Lord. All those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
But you have to believe, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. Then you have to make him Lord, ruler over your life. Get self out the way so that you give him the rule and the reign to orchestrate and lead your life. That's hard for people who have a spirit of control. That is hard for people who don't trust. And I know you're saying, well, who, what, what, how does that? Because you don't know, you didn't have an earthly father that you knew how to trust. So you don't know how to trust your heavenly father. Oh, there is, there is a parallel there. When you haven't seen it in the natural it's challenging to see how this invisible God who sits in heaven, who knows everybody's name, everybody's name written in the palm of his hand. He hears everybody's prayer that I can trust you to hear my prayer too. Yeah, you can. You can. Because he's God. He's not our earthly fathers who are human and absolutely have or will fail us in some way, intentionally or unintentionally. So he goes on to say, they're not going to enter heaven. He said, but only those who do the will. Good morning, Kimberly. Who do the will of the Father. Who do the will of the Father. Who have a nevertheless in their spirit. It ain't going to feel good. Did nobody tell you it was going to feel good? Did nobody say that? Did he tell you that? Did y'all see that written somewhere? Because if y'all see that written somewhere, I need that. Because I, I believe in holding God to his word. So if he said somewhere that obeying him was supposed to feel good then I need to because I'm going to put the word on it I'm going to remind him he said put me in remembrance of my word so if y'all find that somewhere please give it to me because I'm going to be like now look at here Lord you said right here yes I know that your 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 commands are not burdensome he said that but he didn't say they were going to feel good I know that you said uh, I can be led by the spirit, but he didn't say it wasn't, it was going to feel good being led. Do you, do you feel me? Yes, Lord. So, so here we go. Here we go in verse 20, 22. He said, many will say to me, this is Jesus talking. Many will say to me on that day when he's here to judge, when he's judging us for all of our stuff, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in your name? Have I not driven out demons in my, your name? Have I not done miracles in your name? Let me keep going. Have I not served at the homeless shelter in your name? Have I not gone out and done evangelism in your name? Have I not prayed for everybody on the corner in my neighborhood? Have I not done all of that in your name? Have I not brought my tithes and offerings into the storehouse in your name? Have I accepted my calling in your name? God, haven't I tried, haven't I, uh, did not stop fornicating and went ahead and got married in your name? I, I stopped lying most of the time in your name. I, I paid my bills, right, in your name. They might have been late, but I paid them. Hear what I'm saying? He said, yeah, all y'all gonna say all of that. You did all of that. I stopped getting high, Jesus. In your name, and actually you didn't. He 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 took the taste out your mouth, honey, because ain't nobody just going to stop fornicating on their own. Ain't nobody just having sex outside of marriage. Ain't nobody just going to stop getting high on their own. Ain't nobody just going to stop drinking on their own. If you stop, it's because he put stop in you. <laughs> he put good morning, Walter. He put stop in you, and that's why you stop. So don't think it was by your power or by your might. It was by his spirit, saith the Lord. So he says, I know I'm here to help. Good God Almighty. He's a glorious God. He, you're going to say, they're going to say all of these things. He said, and, and I'm going to declare, he said, I'm going to say it publicly. I never knew you. Depart from me. Depart from me. You, you are banished from my presence. This is the amplified message. Get out my face. I'm, I, I don't know you. You did all of that in my name, but you had never truly confessed and put your faith in me. Now, now I'm going to say this. I say this all the time. People in church, but ain't no church in them. They there every Sunday. And somebody say, well, who would do that? Honey, let me tell you, there are people who are at home who have 
Now, I absolutely believe the word of the Lord tells us to come to church. He commands us to do that. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise and bless his holy name. Absolutely. He tells us to do that. He said, don't forsake the assembly of the brethren. You need to be in church. But I absolutely know that there are churches somewhere around this country with how many? 300, is it 800,000 churches in the world or 300 or something like that? All of these churches, there's people in church and ain't no church in them. They're there out of tradition. They're there out of ritual. They're there because that's what you do as a black person. That's what you do if you say you're a Christian. Maybe you're trying to, you know, scope out the brother on the other side of the sanctuary. Maybe you're trying to holler at the sister who sit up there in the front. They're, hey, people at church for a lot of different things and it ain't got nothing to do with Jesus. Let me take my glasses off so y'all. Okay. So now that we're on the same page about that, he said, you're going to say all of those things that you did for me. He said, I'm going to say, depart from me. Good morning, Brother Payne. He's going to say, depart from me. You, and here we go. You are an active worker of wickedness. We know that the King James says you are a worker of iniquity. You are active. You are active in your wickedness. Okay, y'all need to tag somebody, share. Hello. You need to tell somebody. Okay. Because we know them. They're at your family reunions. Some of you dated them. Lord, I pray you didn't marry them. Ha! Jesus. Some of you got friends like that. You work with people like that. They talk about Jesus in one sentence. In the next sentence, they're ready to cut somebody out. Go cut somebody. They're ready to go fight. He said, you are an active worker of wickedness. You plotting and scheming. You are, can, who, what, can't, listen, I'm about to help you. Drug dealers, you're workers of iniquity. I ain't even talking about the user, because the user got an addiction. Drug dealers, pimps, traffickers of people and drugs, you are workers of iniquity. You might be in mass every Sunday. You might be at your local church every Sunday. Every other Sunday. <laughs> you ain't showing up at Bible study. But you are a worker of iniquity. So, so what does the word iniquity mean? It means, it means to have a deep-seated, rooted, predisposition to sin. <laughs> Jesus. You got a pre- disposition to sin whoever it is you got a predisposition to sin yeah so whether it came through your bloodline whether it came through your bloodline you, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob it was in their bloodline to lie now they believed in God and, and, it, and it says that when an iniquity the study that I did says when, a, when an iniquity goes unchecked, it becomes the sinful will of the person. They become reprobate. Well, we know that Abraham's lie was to protect his wife, right? Isaac's lie was to protect Jacob's lie. Okay, so we get all of that. But there is sometimes a sin that is in your bloodline and you cannot seem to break it. So someone could say, but I believe in God, but I do have this sin struggle. And yeah, it was in my daddy. And, and I think my uncles or I got my mama or my aunts or whatever. And it set itself up in me. You can have an iniquity, but you not be a worker of it. Having an iniquity that you're not actively working every day, constantly plotting, thinking about how to use that sin against other people and to get over, that's called a struggle, boo. That's a struggle. That's a sin. That, that's a struggle. You can give it to God. But a worker of iniquity, right? I am a worker of the ministry because this is what I do. Feel me. 
Sean Hood is on here, and I don't know. I don't know if Sean still does hair. But Sean was a, is or was a beautician. She was a worker of skilled labor with her hands to do hair. You actively... Yvette is an evangelist. She is a worker of evangelism. She gonna talk about Jesus to get you saved. It is actively working in wickedness. A worker of iniquity. Now, earlier someone posted, it's the hidden sin. It's not hidden from you who is the worker of iniquity. It's hidden from the people that you work in it on. Manipulator. Deceiver. Liar. Yeah. Abuser. You may not be a physical abuser because then people will see that, but you're an emotional abuser. There's somebody y'all need to tag, share, invite somebody to hear this word. Because somebody is in what I'm talking about. They live with a worker of iniquity. A worker of iniquity is somebody we might call a sociopath. Hmm, sound like somebody we know in Washington. They are a worker of, no, it's not about strife. Where, where, where there's strife, there's all matter of evil. We get that scripture. But they they will, that may be, they like to cause trouble, right? So, but this, but a worker of iniquity, they are deeply rooted in premeditation and choice to sin. To sin. To sin. To sin with their, I just told you, the drug dealer. The, the person who traffics and molests children and, and, and kidnap You are a worker of sin. You're a worker of sin and you spread your sin. That is a worker of iniquity. And they have no repentance. Narcissistic. They have no repentance. What, what do I have to say I'm sorry for? You shouldn't have bought the, the crack. You, you you shouldn't have bought the uh what that uh, what is that stuff they putting in pipes in the rural communities you you that they spending billions of dollars on now to get people uh recovery <laughs> when we was in the epidemic of crack they wouldn't show, shoot no money into our neighborhoods to get people off crack and get them help but hey man we love all people I'm glad they getting help I'm just saying hey man good morning Oscar so the worker of iniquity. The worker of iniquity practices sin. This is their practice. But yet, they are saying they are a Christian. They literally come into silly women who are led astray by their own lusts and desires with tickling ears because those men come into the church. Heroin, thank you. Because they come into the church saying into the lives of Christian women, saying what that woman wants to hear and they're led away. And Timothy calls them silly women. Not stupid, just silly. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's so nice. There's a difference. So this worker of iniquity, he is or she is, this spirit that operates in people is deeply rooted. It's deeply rooted. The sin is deeply rooted. And it's hard to break. You need deliverance. Workers of iniquity. So you truly can. Good morning daughter. Pumpkin. Joya. Evangelist. So those who operate and walk in. And, and, and workers of iniquity. So you. These are people who are. They, they've they made a premeditated choice to sin. I'm going to get him. You know that's somebody else's husband. I'm going I'm to do that. I'm going to do this. I, I watched um, yesterday, for whatever reason, my TV was on. Um, what is it called? For My Man. And they show all of these things that women did for their men. And I'm sitting there saying, man, didn't she see that coming? But the truth is, we all saw it coming. We all saw it coming. We all hooked up with somebody that tried to lead us astray. Man, my your you and your boys, 
You know he was leading you astray. You know you weren't supposed to. You know he was a worker. And then he plotted and schemed and everything that he does is about plotting and scheming. There was one couple that hooked up with another couple. And they said all they did all day was create schemes and ways of, make, of, of making money. Getting money. Basically robbing people. And then they would rob them and steal from them and come back to their apartment and get high. Worker of iniquity. Premeditated. Skilled at sinning. But God told us in the word to lay aside every sin and every weight that so easily entangles us so that we can run this race. Oh yeah, we all know somebody, don't we, Sister Shelley? We all know somebody. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. We know somebody. So, so Jesus says, you are a worker of iniquity. You operate in lawlessness. You constantly break in the law. Ah, okay. So, like I said, next week we're going to talk about sin, transgression, and iniquity. So, you plot to speed. You plot to do 90 in a 60 mile an hour zone, right? You on the highway and you you plotting. You don't care. You don't care if you cause you weaving in and out because you're careless. People who are workers of iniquity, they're careless. They don't care about nobody but themselves. They don't care about nobody but themselves. They're careless. So I want you to just make sure I'm not talking about the person who just happens to speed, okay? You, you speech, you got a ticket, whatever, whatever. You have a little lead foot. That ain't what it's about. It's you're constantly breaking laws. You intentionally break laws. I think I've told you the story that in the height of my mental illness with Graves' disease, um, I, I stole. And I would steal stuff and get outside and throw it away. Because it wasn't about the stuff. It was about the sickness that was in my head. And the emptiness that was in my soul and my spirit. And I remember one time sitting in my car. And saying, Lord, help me. I don't want to do this. I know this is wrong. Lord, I love you. This is not, this is not you. God, I need your help. I need your help. And I literally remember I said, if stealing is what will allow me to get caught so that I can get help. Sometimes, because I need you to distinguish the difference between the worker of iniquity and the person who's struggling. The worker of the iniquity and the person who doesn't have strength to stand. We're not talking, we, we're not, there's grace for you. Over here, those who don't have the strength to stand, those who are struggling, I'm glad you're struggling because that means you haven't given yourself over to the foolishness of what may have started out as even a family issue, as even a, a generational thing. Good morning, Brother Benson. Good morning, Sister Joy. So it, it, even if it, it started out, your family got a bunch of liars and drug dealers and drug users and drug abusers. Good God Almighty. Maybe you have, you know, um, a teenage pregnancy or, or just all of these different things that are part of the bloodline and the generations of your past. But we're not talking to you. There's grace for you. God loves you. We're talking about the worker of iniquity that says, Lord, Lord. But you don't know Jesus from a can of dry paint. Good God Almighty. You don't, you don't have a personal relationship with him. You use the name of God, number 45, to get other Christians, evangelicals, to buy into your foolishness. To buy into your premeditated sin. To buy into your narcissistic, never going to say, I'm sorry, never ask for forgiveness. There's no repentance in your heart. That's the worker of iniquity. Yeah. Yeah. And the Antichrist will be all of that. He will be a worker of iniquity. 
his sin will be uh his his the the hidden sin will be hidden from those who have veils over their eyes. It ain't gonna be hidden from him. But for those who know their God and know this word, we ain't gonna be fooled because God will not have you ignorant of Satan's schemes and devices. So he goes on and he says. Now, now I want to I want to bring in a couple of more scriptures for you. So that was Matthew chapter 7 starting about in verse 19 cuz he started out talking about those who don't bear fruit. So your first indicator of a worker of iniquity who's saying Lord, Lord, but they ain't got no fruit. They don't know how to love nobody. They don't know how to talk to nobody. They don't know how to treat nobody. They ain't faithful to nothing. They ain't got no self-control. They don't know what kindness or faithfulness looks like. You are a worker of iniquity, adulterer. Because see, let me, let me say this. I'm going to say it. I hear you. I'm going to say it. There's a di see, see, committing adultery is a little different, just a little different, from having sex outside of marriage. When you commit adultery, you got to plot that thing, man. You got to you got to get hotel rooms. You see what I'm saying? You got to do everything to hide that sin from your spouse. But it ain't hidden from God, and it's not hidden from you. You are a worker of iniquity, but you saying, "Lord, Lord." I don't care who you are. Pastor, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, apostle, usher, in the choir, on the worship team, playing the instruments, psalmist. I don't care who you are. Just coming to church every Sunday. It don't matter to me. The fornicator ain't necessarily got a plot. They can just fall into that because y'all sitting there watching the movie. <laughs> and you just got a feeling and you just do it. But the adulterer, you have to go and plot that thing. You got to find somebody who's going to be in agreement with you to do it. Get saved, for real. It ain't about being perfect. It's about turning our hearts to God to say, I don't want to stand before the Lord and have and say, I know you. Because you, you cheated on your wife the whole 20 years y'all was married. Y'all was married 21 and you treated, cheated 20 of them. You cheated, you, 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 you mistreated your husband the whole time you was married to him. You, you was, you was on sites looking at pornography all the time. And want to come into the, the bed, the, the haven of your bedroom and want your wife to, to do all them back bends and twists. And because she can't or she won't, cause some can't, anybody that limber. She doing yoga, not for that, honey. She doing yoga for her peace. Not to be jumping through hoops for, for foolishness. Okay? So I'm just saying, whatever your worker of, that worker of iniquity is, Jesus said, he's going to say, depart from me. God is not looking for us to be perfect. Hear me. God is not looking for, expecting you, me, nobody to be perfect. He's not, he's not, he's not, he's not expecting you to be perfect. He's the only perfect one. But if you recognize it, acknowledge it, confess your faults, confess your sins. The Bible says one to another, to the elders, and you'll be healed, you'll be saved. I'm one of them. I'm an elder. But I have to find people to confess my stuff to. This is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm struggling with. This is what I need help with. I have to find those persons, trustworthy people. That's going to pray you through. That ain't going to beat your head, beat you over the head with it. They're going to speak the truth in love, but you're going to walk away knowing this is what I got to do. This is what the word says. I'm accountable to this because I'm a child of God. First John 5 says it like this, verse 16. Anyone who sees his brother in a sin, he said, leading to death. He said to those who commit sins that do not lead to death, he said, but there is a sin that leads to death. And so uh, John says it like this, and I don't, I, won't, I don't even want to say what that is. I'm just going to pray and fast about it. The sin that leads to death is working, uh, workers of iniquity. The works that you do uh, habitually that you have plotted 
and schemed to do. He said, those, those are sins. He said that, you know, mm -mm. he said, I don't even really want to talk about that. I don't even want to get into that because that scares me. The sin um, that denies the power of Christ, the power of what the Holy Spirit can do in you, worker of iniquity. He can stop you. He can help you. You can go days and be, let me tell y'all something. Every time you have a day and you didn't sin in the way that you normally used to sin, you need to celebrate that. Oh my God, I didn't do that today. Thank you, Jesus. Uh-oh, it's been three days. Hallelujah. It's been five days. Oh, Jesus, two weeks. You celebrate that because the enemy wants you to, to forget about the fact that it's day to day, giving us this day our daily bread, giving us this day our provision, giving us this day our grace, giving us this day our forgiveness, giving us this day our mercy. He wants you to forget. So celebrate when you didn't cuss nobody out. <laughs> Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. So he goes on to say, 2 Timothy, let's look at it. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. But God's firm foundation stands, bearing a seal upon us. The Lord knows those who are his. Back to Matthew chapter 7. The Lord knows who's his. And let everyone who names the name of the Lord part from iniquity. This is not those who are workers of iniquity. It is those who have iniquity in their heart. Have generational habitual struggles, the hidden sins. This is why David said, Lord, deliver me from my hidden faults. We have faults that are hidden from us. Did you know that? You then clocked on somebody and somebody's like, oh my God, I've never seen sister such and such act like that. that I've never seen that man act like that before. Because we have hidden things. Hidden things that are in the crevices of our heart and, and hidden through in our soul and our emotions that somebody touched the wrong button, say the wrong thing, you just explode. And, you're, and you are like, where did that come from? I can't believe I said that. I can't believe I did that. Those are iniquities. But those are not the workers of iniquity. But if you continue in iniquity... If you continue in iniquity, we are over our time. Let me get off here. We, if you continue in iniquity, it becomes willful sin. And willful sin leads to a reprobate mind, which becomes a lifestyle that is outside of the will of God. So, Father, I pray over those who have iniquity struggles, generational struggles, habits that have connected themselves, who have the can't help it in the name of Jesus, God, who have compulsive uh, disorders, God, in the name of Jesus, God, we pray, we pray your grace, we pray your blood over them. But God, those as well, those who are connected to those who are workers of iniquity, the workers of iniquity who are in our churches, God, I pray that you bring conviction to their hearts, to their souls, and to their spirits, God. God, that they will look up and say, I want clean hands. I want a pure heart. I want a soul that does not walk in vanity, that does not walk in an unrepentant mindset that says, I have nothing to apologize for. I have nothing to ask for forgiveness for. God, I pray for our government in the name of Jesus, God. I pray concerning this next court, uh, uh, this next justice in the Supreme Court. God, it's not just about Roe v. versus Wade. It, it's not just about abortion. It's not just about same-sex marriage. God, though we know those are things that are outside of your will, but God, it's about affirmative action. It's about money that goes to minorities and money that goes to uh, black colleges 
God. Money that goes towards colleges that bring in a certain amount of minorities. God, it's more, it's about civil rights. It's about voting rights. It's about the president being held accountable for his, his dis acts against the Constitution and against the United States, against the people of God. Hallelujah. Against this country. God, I pray that you bring conviction to every evangelical God who has continued to stand against a liar, an adulterer, hallelujah, someone who's, who's gotten with prostitutes knowingly, who's, who's uh, defiled women knowingly, publicly, nationally, in the name of Jesus, who's made fun of handicapped and, and those who are veterans, God, who has, who has spewed racist thoughts, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you bring conviction to every evangelical that has a church, that has a television ministry, that has not spoken out against his treatment, against those at the border. His treatment against those who are of Muslim faith or, or Muslim heritage in the name of Jesus, but have done nothing wrong. I pray God. Who has talked about people and called them SOBs. I pray. Knowingly has committed adultery on at least two of his wives and maybe this third one too. God, I pray. I pray that you bring conviction to them. I pray that you bring conviction to them. I pray that their hearts become repentant. Hallelujah. And they correct themselves publicly before their congregation and before this country because they stood with a man only because they wanted someone in this justice seat who will come against same-sex marriage and abortion. The ends does not justify the means to mistreat people and to have over close to 3,000 children displaced and away from their mothers, away from their family. And they're in one part of the country and, and, they're, and their children are in another part. Some of these are babies and toddlers who don't have a voice, who may be being mistreated and abused. They escape violence. They didn't just come over here across from Mexico. They came for asylum. They came to find a city of refuge. And his policy has treated them like criminals. God, I pray. I pray for the salvation of number 45 soul. For Donald Trump's soul. I pray that he is saved. I pray that he has a Damascus Road experience. I pray that he is convicted. Good morning, Alvin. I pray that he is convicted and his soul is saved for real with the repentance that cries out, Lord, forgive me. Daddy, we love you this morning and we bless your holy name. Until you bring us together next week, God, I pray blessings over your people in the favor of God and a swift, sudden turnaround in them and and the things around them, the situations around them. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. And we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, Sissy D. I love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. Father, before we uh, we dismiss, God, I lift up uh, my nephew Carson, God. I lift him up to you. God, I thank you for your blessings over him. I thank you that he is the righteousness of God. He is a man of valor. God, we say that he will walk in his purpose, God. He is going to do great things in the kingdom of God. Father, we thank you for the sudden turnaround in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for Christian, God. We thank you for Donovan, God. We thank you, God, for Columbus, God. We thank you, God, for the household of men, God. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for a praying mother and a praying wife. We thank you for one who stands as a watchman. Hallelujah. Who makes up the hedge, God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for every wife and every mother who stands in the gap for their husband and their children. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for every husband who covers their wives and their children, God. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray that you bring them up, God, into the place, into the position that you have for them to be as men of God. Lord, we know it's sexy and it's fine when our husbands pray and 
when they lead and when they talk about Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We know, God, that the home is covered, the life is covered. Bless the finances, God, of those under the sound of my voice, their health, their healing. God, we bless your name today. We thank you for clean hands and a pure heart. We thank you that our souls are not lifted up to vanity. We cry out to you for the swift change, the complete change, the sure change in us first, and then in the things around us, as well as the things around us. We love you this morning. Thank you, Sister Yvette. I love you guys with the love of the Lord. God bless.